That's ten of them. Ten dead kids. Yeah, ten that we've seen. How many are we going to find in the brush? The cow doesn't look so bad now, but three or four days from now, without any salt, their bones will be sticking out. It really hurts me, Mr. See those poor dumb brutes chewing away at bark and leaves and dirt just to find salt that isn't there. What happened to Bob Rio, anyhow? He should have delivered that load of salt a month ago. Well, we can't keep waiting for Bob to deliver it. We'll have to just go and get some. We need it in a hurry, or else we're going to lose most of our herd. The dead calf just over the hill. There'll be a lot more if we don't get salt in a hurry. Three days of Spanish wells, three days back. Better get started. Tired of waiting, Shaler. We got cattle falling. We want salt, not promises. We want it now. You get your salt, and all the ranches are represented so it can be divided fairly, not before. Now clear the street. Now that's just a warning. The next one's going to cut flesh. Clear the street! Yeah. Sure could have used you just now. What's going on? You've known Sheriff Vern Shaler for quite a spell, haven't you? Sure. He's shaming us, Ben. He's standing us off with the shotgun when we gotta have salt. What's Vern Shaler got to do with it? This all belongs to Bob Rio, doesn't it? Rio's dead. Rio's dead? So's the salt bed. Played out altogether. His niece is sitting on what's left of the salt over in that warehouse right now. She ain't selling. Your friend Shaler's upholding her. Well, we're just gonna have some reason, isn't he? The petticoat's his reason. Shaler's courting her, so he's back in her play. There's one other thing, Ben. We're all gonna lose our herds unless we get salt pronto. Oh, sure. And the salt in that warehouse ain't half enough to go around. I'm here to buy... Here to buy salt, of course. Um, Cartwright. Oh, yes, the Ponderosa. You've been a very good customer in the past. I was uh, very sorry to hear about Bob Rio. 
We were old friends. Oh, thank you. As it happens, I hardly knew him. Um, I suppose you've heard that the salt bed is, uh, is exhausted. The only available salt is this here in the, in the warehouse. Yes, uh, I was told. Mm. Yeah, if you'll sign that order. You can buy up to 60% of the amount you purchased last year. We're ready to load and pull out right now, so if you just tell me how much I owe you. Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Cartwright. There are others ahead of you. You'll have to wait your turn. Oh, well, ma'am, we were three days getting here, and we'll be three days getting back. My cat will need the salt now. We've no time to waste. I'm sorry. You'll have to wait your turn. Miss Hallie, have you ever seen cattle die for want of salt? Not one or two at a time, but in bunches of 20 or 30? I've been spared that experience. We were losing calves when we left the Ponderosa, ma'am. If we don't get that salt there immediately, I can lose my whole herd. You've no idea how many times I've been told that lately. <laughs> right now, while we're talking here and arguing, I'm losing maybe 20 or 30... Trouble, Miss Halley? No trouble. I was just telling Mr. Cartwright, I only own the salt. The business details are all handled by Sheriff Vern Shaler. You know him, of course. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Ben, Ben Cartwright. It's good to see you. Burn. Sit down, sit down. Well, this calls for a drink. Uh, maybe something a little stronger in this coffee. I got a little brandy here. I came to talk about salt, Ben. This is your kind of brandy, Ben. In fact, it's the first time I ever tasted this without a Ponderosa. Well, Burn, I came to talk about salt. You and a lot of people. This is the worst drought I ever saw, Ben. No spring grass. And Rio's scraper hits bottom and no salt. Miss Alley tells me that you're in charge of the financial details. Yeah, just before you got here, some of the ranchers were trying to take me apart. I had to run them off. Yes, I understand. With a shotgun. Well, as you can see, that's no job for a lady. She needed help, so I volunteered. When all that salt's gone out of the warehouse, Ben, there's no more, maybe for 400 miles. Closer to 500. Yeah. And the cattle bawling all the way from here to Big Spring. And the salt in the warehouse is only 60% of what you cattlemen are used to buying for the year. So naturally, when I heard that, why, I told Ada, we're gonna have a problem. Now somebody make sure that all you buyers get a fair share. That's why I took the job. Now, Laverne, you know how much each one of us is supposed to get. Sell it to us and let us go home. I'd like to do that, Ben, but it's not my salt, it's Ada's. And she's got the right to say. And she wants all you buyers here so that nobody can squabble over the deal. Even if the cattle die while we're waiting? But she doesn't know anything about that. She's from the city. Well, you're from here. Why don't you tell her? Look, Ben, you'll be on your way home by tomorrow. You're the last buyer to show, except this Sid Talbot from the C Bar T Ranch. And we just got word he'll be here in a few hours. Well, that ought to make you feel better. She wants all the buyers here. And salt's in short supply. Now, how much is that salt going to cost? Well, a little more than last year. But you can understand that, Ben, with the salt bed scraped clean and... How almost... much more? I don't know exactly. We talked about price, but we didn't exactly nail it down. Mm. Well, she's not going to hold you buyers up, Ben. Now, she's a good woman. She's as fine as they come. Well, I'm sure she is, Vern. You might just tell that fine woman that wars have been started in the kind of salt. If she's not careful, she just may start one here. Well, we still have a couple of hours to wait. A couple of hours? We ain't got but minutes. I know. I've said that till it's coming out of my ears. We still have to wait. Ben, we're having a meeting. You've been talking to Shaler. We'd like to know what he had to say. Yeah. I can tell you one thing. When the big ones start bidding for that salt, there ain't going to be any left for the rest of us. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Hello, boy. I just left Shaler. 
the salt sale will begin just as soon as Sid Talbot gets here. First, we wait for Carter. Now Talbot. Big money man. Either one of them can buy all the rest of us. But if you don't simmer down that mouth here, it's going to get you in trouble. It's all right. Where's Talbot getting in? He's here now. Well, morn is corner. Well, gentlemen, why the long face? Yeah. Cattle dying and no salt, that's why. I'm glad you're here. Have you seen Shayla yet? Not yet. I figured to talk to him tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? I think you ought to go see him right now. Shayla held up the sale of the salt until you got here, and we've all been waiting, and everybody's ready to load up and move out. No, the salt beds are cleaned out, and the stock's way down in the warehouse. Uh, how is this going to be divided up? Well, everybody's going to get 60% of what they got last year. Your idea, Cartwright? No, Shayla's idea. He figured it out with Miss Alley. The lady who owns the salt. Sixty percent seems fair enough for those who stood still. Those who sold some of the cattle, that's more than enough. Well, gentlemen, you see, my herd has increased by 1,200 head. And 60% of the salt I bought last year won't nearly be enough. 1,200 head? It's more than twice what he was running last year. Sit down, Al. Oh, he hasn't been in town well, ten minutes. He's already trying to no steal point it. in arguing and fighting and bickering now. Let's try to figure out a way to work this out. The difference between you and me, Cartwright, is you want to see everybody gets their share. Me, I'm only interested in mine. <laughs> He'll steal it. One way or another, he'll grab our shares. No, he won't. Shayla won't let him. Shayla said he'd make sure that salt was divided fair. Didn't he, Ben? Yeah, that's what he said. You're the last buyer to arrive. Sixty percent's the figure I've heard mentioned. Yes. That's the way Vern and I worked it out. It seemed fairest for everybody. I'm sure it is. Bob Rio had a good business here. It's too bad you inherited empty salt beds. Uh, Miss Halley, I don't mean to be personal. I don't mean to pry, but I wonder about people. Can you tell me what you did before you came here? I taught school, kept books in a bank. If you'll just sign the order. Bookkeeper. <laughs> I'll bet you did twice the work the men did and got half the pay. Less than half. If you'll sign, please. Of course. Burns known these cattlemen a long time. They're personal friends of his, so I can understand his concern about them. But you, Miss Halley, you're new here. You've had to work for a living. You know it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. I'm surprised you haven't looked out for yourself, your future. I have, Mr. Talbot. Not in the way I mean. My herd's increased in size, and I'm going to need more than 60% of last year's buy. I'm sure you are, Mr. Talbot. Every cattleman has told me the same thing. I pay for what I want, Miss Halley. I pay very well. Everything all right, Miss Ada? Everything is just fine. My herd's bigger, so I'm gonna need a bigger share. And I'm willing to pay a lot more. Just coming over to see you. That's nice. Anything special? Well, I don't think we should wait for Talbot any longer. Better get over to the warehouse and sell those men that salt. Mr. Talbot is here. I've just been talking to him. Well, that's good news. I'll go over and tell the men to load the wagon. Uh, Vern, we haven't settled the price yet. Well, it's your salt, Ada. But I know you're not going to gouge the men just because they're losing their herds. Our salt. I thought you never would. It wasn't because I didn't want to. Do it again. 
Oh, excuse me. Oh, Ben. Come on in. I want you to be the first to know. Uh, Ada and I are going to get married. Well, <laughs> isn't that something? Well, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. How about a little drink to the wedding? Well, I think that's uh, very much in order. Yes, certainly. Uh, have you uh, set a date yet? Just as soon as that last salt wagon goes over the horizon. Oh, well, then, uh, if I may, I'd like to propose a toast. Here's to an early wedding. Oh, I, I hope you forgive me for uh, breaking this happy mood, but we are losing cattle, and when do we start loading? Well, any minute now. Ada and I were just talking price. Your ranches will, will go on, growing and, and, and prospering. But when my salt is gone, there'll be no more. Ben, suppose that, uh, that you pay the same price as you did last year, even though you're only getting 60% of the salt. Would that be asking too much? I guess that'd be all right. I haven't had a chance to tell Vern, but um, we'll have to find another way to, to divide the salt. You see, Mr. Talbot has a much larger herd than last year. You'll need extra salt. Um, he's made me a very generous offer. Twice the price of last year. Now, look, Vern. Well, this is the first I've heard of it. Vern doesn't own the salt, Mr. Cartwright. I do. A successful man like you must have heard of the law of supply and demand. Of course. Well, when you drive your cattle to market, you don't sell to the lowest bidder, do you? Peter. Let Mr. Cartwright answer. You forgive me if I don't finish this drink. That's what I said, 1,200 head. 1,200 head. You're absolutely sure about that? What difference does it make? Joseph? We had a drink with a couple of your ranch hands, Mr. Talbot. They said your herd's a lot smaller this year than it was last. Snooping and prying, just like the Cartwrights. Close to 800 heads smaller than last year. Bigger or smaller, what difference does it make? Mr. Talbot, you're using a lie to get more salt than you deserve. That may be true. But Cartwright, sooner or later, you and I are going to have to partner with each other. Get rid of the competition, or we're going to be at each other's throats. Talbot, we'll never be partners. And if I have to, I'll fight you all the way. I hear you're trying to run the price of salt up so you can get a hog share. To get what I want, I pay what I have to pay. You already got Hawkins and Walters sighting with you against the rest of us. Now, what did that cost? Money? Salt? Or both? Williams, you talk too much. You raise that price out of our reach, we're all gonna lose every head we got. Tough, Zeb. Tough. Thomas! I ain't gonna let that happen. It took me a lifetime to get what I got. I ain't 
going to give it up without a fight. Hey, Williams! Get a doctor quick. Take him to his room. Pa! 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 Who shot you, Pa? Never mind that now. Let's get him up there. Who did it, Pa? Never mind. All right, what's going on here? Just difference of opinion, Sheriff. It was a fair fight. Nothing fair about it. Talbot's twice as fast as Williams. Talbot, you shoot Williams? Williams drew on Talbot. All Talbot did was put a bullet in Williams' shoulder. If nobody has any objection, I'll get on with what I was doing. Williams was only one man, Talbot. Maybe you'd like to try to walk over the rest of us. My way, and I will. Next man draws a gun, draws against me. Now, the rest of you people, move out of here. Twice what I offered you yesterday. I saw you shoot, Mr. Williams. Well, he drew on me. Why? He thought I was going to buy more than my fair share of the salt. What's wrong? Well, if my salt is worth shooting a man for, it's worth a lot more money than this. Missy, that's a fair price. Don't try my patience. Are you threatening me, Mr. Talbot? You think what you want to think. But if I have to take that salt to get it, I will. Would you like to repeat that in front of the sheriff? I'm just telling you that if you hold that salt much longer, my cattle are going to die, and I'm not going to let that happen. And I'm not going to take less for my salt than I can get. And I'm not going to deal with you alone. I'm going to meet with all the cattlemen. In one hour, put a price on the salt. He's not going to get away with this, Pa. I'm not going to let him. Listen to me, boy. It was a fool thing I did here. Eh? I'm lucky to be alive. He didn't have any call to draw on you. I drew on him. I did. Didn't I, Ben? Yes, yes, you did. I don't want you drawing on him. He'll kill you. Doc will be here in a few minutes. <laughs> you promise me, boy. You promise you won't draw on top of it. You listen to your pa, son. You stay right here with him until the doctor comes. She called a meeting. Everybody's here. Where's she? She'll be along any minute. I'm taking all I'm gonna take. You won't have to wait any longer, Mr. Talbot. You set a price? Yes, I have. One dollar per head of cattle you own, for 60% of the amount you bought last year. I've got 700 head. It had cost me $700 for salt worth less than $50. If I had $700, and I haven't. You can borrow it, Mr. Pardee. Borrowed to the hilt. Shaler, you behind this? I set the price. Mr. Shaler had nothing to do with it. Then, ma'am, I know Hogg's got better family than you. Burn. Now, you 
You've got five seconds to swallow those words. I beg your pardon, ma'am. See me back to the warehouse. I'd be happy to. I never figured Fern to side with her against us on the price of that salt. But how many of these ranchers can afford to pay a dollar a head for that salt? You are about the only one who can afford it, Mr. Carrey. Hello, uh, Cartwright. You gonna meet a price? No. Why not? If I meet a price, and if you do, that'll establish it for every rancher here. None of them can afford it. But what are you going to do? I'm going to refuse to buy. And if you do the same, we can force a price down. How long will that take? I'm losing more cattle every day. Wait a minute. Listen. Nobody wants this. But the truth is that you and I could survive if we lost every head of cattle we owned. Now, if we refuse to meet our price, if we all stick together, we can force it down. Stick together? These cattlemen will never stick together. I know it. Sooner or later, it's every man for himself. matter. Ada, you're asking too much of those men. Uh, you've worn that badge for 10 years. What have you got to show for it? I got paid. Poorly paid. One of us has to look out for our future. There'd be no marriage if we were worrying every night whether your gun would carry us through the next day. You'll see. This will buy us a new life. It's too much of a price. Shh, my darling. You have no idea how much I love you. If you really knew. Buy your beer candy, Ned? Nah, I got a bottle. Yeah, so I see. Why don't you back off on us for a while, huh? Don't worry about me. No, I just ain't used to this waiting. Yeah, pa knows what he's doing. That woman's as nervous as we are. She'll break. She'll bring the price down. We can't wait too long. Yeah. A couple more beers, buddy. friends. Well, if they're friends of yours, I don't want to know them. You know why you're still alive? Well, why don't you tell me? Because I promised my pa I wouldn't draw on you. And I keep my promises. That's a smart thing to do. But that don't mean that I can't tell you what I think of you. That don't mean I can't. All right, that's enough. Put those guns away. Those men hurt. Get them up. Now, any more of this, and I'll lock you all up. 
What's all this about? I know you got a little running with Talbot on it. You men stay here. I know how to get that salt out of the warehouse, and I'm going to get it now. Mr. Talbot, I thought you might be the first to come. And the last, I think. What do you mean by that? I'm prepared to meet your price, a dollar a head. Very sensible. And I'm going to offer you $5,000 more. Provided you sell me the rest of the salt at the same price. Would you share the salt? No. But if the other ranchers don't get salt, the herds would be destroyed. And stuff. Which would leave you with the only herd in the area. You'd be able to set your own price for beef. And for cattle to restock the other ranches. That's right. And you would make a lot of money. Money. Money I would be willing to share. all the ranches, except Mr. Talbot. I just wanted you to know that we've decided to meet your terms. Oh. Well, I understand some of the ranchers lack like the, like the money to meet the terms. Yes, it's true. Uh, none of them has enough, but uh, I've made arrangements, and they're now able to overcome that problem. Oh. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. But I'm... I'm sorry. What do you mean, you're sorry? I've just sold all the salt to Mr. Talbot. Something wrong? Yeah, there's something wrong. You want me to get Shader over here? Nope. If I yell, he'll come running. No, don't bother him. I was just down at the livery stable. They're hitching up Talbot's wagons to haul out that salt. Receipt. Of course. Either you or Shayla tell that deputy I bought the salt. You tried to buy it. Tried? Yeah. I gave her the money and she's writing me a receipt. by a group of ranchers who appointed me treasurer. You were outbid by one dollar. Cartwright, that salt belongs to me. Bought and paid for my be. Don't let me interrupt. Keep talking. I'd like to know what's going on, too. Sheriff, this salt belongs to me. All of it. All of it? Verna had to. He met my price. We met it too. And I bid it by one dollar. She accepted my offer first. I demand that. Shut up! Now, I know what Cartwright would do with his. But how about Talbot? Was he going to share? Well, 
What difference does it make? I told you to shut up, and I mean it. Well, Ada, was he? No. And you were going to sell it to him knowing that? Well, Vern, what could I do? He, he met my price. Hey, you see? She admits I bought it first. Now, you were the last one to arrive. By the time you got here, we'd all ordered our salt. The only thing that wasn't settled was the price, and I settled that just now. Sheriff Cartwright all but forced that check on her at gunpoint. That salt belongs to me. Ben, I sympathize with you in principle. But if he got here with the money first, then I'm afraid the law sides with him. Now, look, Vern, that salt is life to every head of cattle in this part of the state. If you deny it to them, that's mass murder. And no decent man or court could countenance that. Here's the keys to the loading dock. Tell them and get their wagons. I will, but I want you to divide the salt. I will. Get out of town. You can't do this. The salt's being stolen. Don't get out of town. Don't you come back. Ben, if you'll excuse us, I've got something I'd like to talk over with Ada. I've seen it happen so many times, you know. I'm sorry, Vern. I guess I, I didn't really understand. And I did it for both of us. So we could have some security. Something to build our marriage on. You think you know someone. You know them so well that you... you begin seeing things with their eyes and... hearing things with their ears. And then one day he realized that... You don't know him at all. Fern, I... I said I'm sorry. Now, Talbot, now... I understand him. He, greed makes his wagon go. He wants everything and, and then some, but... I didn't dream money was the only thing that was important to you. Fern, it's dead. It's all over now. I kept telling myself it's all right if she gets the best price she can as long as everybody gets their share. But you were going to sell Talbot all that salt Knowing full well, he wasn't going to give any to anybody. Then he met the price. Yeah. What was it that Ben said? A form of mass murder that no decent man or court could countenance? Whatever we had between us, Ada, that's gone now. And I'll be leaving for good. Just as soon as your salt is loaded out. Stables that Talbot and Connor just left town. I'd feel a whole lot better if I'd seen it with my own eyes. It's all right. I figure if they're gonna make a try, that's the place to do it. One rifle up there, and nobody's gonna load any salt. Take a look. Yeah.
waiting for you, Ben. Can't resist the man in trouble, can you? You hit him too hard. Nothing's gonna help him. Stand up. Slow. Drop your gun, Bell. Over here. Got rights and four or five ranches to do it, I will. Ada Halley has my check. This is my soul. When you kill the deputy, you put yourself on the other side of the law. What about the sheriff? You gonna kill him, too? That don't bother me none. Conrad, keep a watch on that door. Now you're gonna get them to come in here, one at a time. Oh, no. You wanna die? No. But you call horse in here first. No. You really want to play those odds, Talbot? You pull that trigger, sure you'll kill me. But there are three out there for each one of you in here. Hey. Better get in there. I see a light glitting on gun barrels. Drop the gun. Get your hand.
along? Right. Ben, we're all loaded up. How much do we owe? Ada says, no charge. A gift from Burn Shaler. A gift? Well, that's mighty generous. I don't know what the rest of you are going to do, but... Ned and me are going to pay our fair share. Ben, you'll see that she gets it. I'll see that she gets it. Thanks, fellas. Thanks. See you, Ben. Yeah.